In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the amino acid asparagine. I'll show you the structure and tell you a little bit about it along the way. So asparagine is an amino acid that was actually the first amino acid of your 20 proteinogenic amino acids that was ever discovered. Asparagine is identified by the three letter code A, S, N, and by the one letter code N. Asparagine was discovered in France in 1806. Now, what's kind of interesting about asparagine is that the source from which it was discovered was, as you might guess, asparagus. However, great dietary sources of asparagine do not include asparagus. I mean, obviously it is a source, but generally you'll find uh, asparagine in sources like eggs, chicken, red meat, fish. Asparagine is an amino acid that is a diprotic amino acid with a backbone like this, F, C, C. I'm gonna draw asparagine with a, or at a pH of one. So I'm gonna draw this amino acid when it is fully protonated. <clears throat> So my N termini is NH3 plus. My R group coming off of my alpha carbon looks like this. It's DH2, then C double bonded oxygen, and NH2. Now this functional group or this R group down here is not ionizable. And so that's going to maintain no charge whatsoever, regardless of the pH. Now the N termini on the left-hand side of my structure and the C termini on the right-hand side of my structure, those two groups are ionizable. The N termini is going to have a pKa of approximately 8.8, .8, and the C termini is going to have a pKa of approximately 2.02. .02. So the way that I've drawn the molecule so far is what you would expect to see if this molecule was in a solution with a pH of 1. The overall charge of that molecule would be plus 1 because the N termini maintains a positive charge, the C termini has no charge, and the R group has no charge whatsoever. So asparagine can be represented or can have a charge, the free amino acid can have a charge of plus 1. It can also have a charge of 0 whenever the C termini is deprotonated, I'm putting a star by the first group that would be deprotonated as you go from a pH of one to higher. And then the second and only other group that's ionizable is my N termini. And when that's deprotonated and the C termini is deprotonated, the C termini is going to have a charge of minus one and the N termini will have a charge of zero. So that means that asparagine, the free amino acid of asparagine, can range in charge from plus one, zero, and minus one. Now, those are some of the arguably most important things about asparagine. I hope that was helpful to look at the structure and break down the components of it. Have a good one.